about sin. How does one explain what a sin is? Why committing adultery is a sin if it brings joy to both partners? Why cannot you kill the man who had killed your child? Why is it a shame to take anything that belongs to someone else even if the owner does not need it? The sin is what violates the universal law. Adultery is a pleasure for both partners, but it chains them. By binding flesh, it is necessary to bind the souls too. Otherwise, it makes power of Satan stronger. Committing adultery without love is a sin, while a liaison of love is not. Therefore, adultery is sinful as it gives life to the powers of darkness and not because it does any harm to a hated husband or an unloved wife. People must not live together without love. Adultery is not a betrayal of a wedded husband or wife, but a coupling of the flesh without love. Is a loving spouse capable of committing adultery? No, it is impossible. The one who has sex with a husband or wife without love can be called an adulterer, and that is a sin. You shall not kill for the same reason. To kill means to incur such hatred that evil rejoices in heaven. I shall repay. It means that the Lord will find such a way of retaliation that will correspond to the crime committed. For there is no justice on earth, but there is in heaven and that is an immutable law of the universe. By avenging the life of a beloved person cut short by a murderer, you become a villain yourself. If your faith was strong enough, you would know that God's punishment is tenfold worse. Having killed your abuser, you become a murderer yourself. But he is not dead, he has just escaped the necessary extent of retaliation which corresponds to his offense, as he has already suffered from you on earth. You have burdened yourself with the sin and weakened the punishment for the criminal. Is that what you wanted to achieve? Here is a parable about it. A fool rejoiced, having inflicted pain upon another person. It seemed to him that he could just plunge the knife into the soul, and that would be his strength. But the man, having survived the blow, did not take revenge. He had a big heart. The fool did not realize that by hurting another man, he had stuck the knife into himself. That blow went down on his record as deliberate evil, and the fool had to pay for his murderous act in full as he received no response from the one he had offended. And the law of the universe is inexorable. Every action receives a response in heaven, but there it will be much more powerful. The moral of the parable is that there is no need for revenge on earth you can hardly estimate the power of a retaliatory blow and it will always be either weaker or stronger than the one you received. So leave revenge to the heavenly powers. They know better what your offender deserves. Here is one more parable about it. An angry man killed another man, a good one. The soul of the murdered man flew to the Lord and begged to forgive the killer. This soul was kind, but the court of heaven did not accept its prayer. The Lord answered the soul, It is wise to punish evil, because the law of retaliation in the universe acts wisely. It does not allow those who have committed crimes to remain unpunished. 
So do not waste your strength or time begging to spare your killer. Evil must be punished. That is the law. Especially deliberate evil, for the mind of that man was filled with satanic thoughts, and Satan is my wise enemy. It would be better for you if you do not know what I will do with him. But can you punish, Lord? asked the soul. You are made of love, goodness, and light. Can you hate and kill? No, answered the Lord. Now I shall leave your murderer be, so from now on he will have to deal with his tormentor, whose thoughts he has perceived with his brain. By staying with Satan, man does not have to wait for God's interference and can only rely on his teacher. And so the life of the murderer will become hell, and after death, hell awaits him in heaven. You shall not steal for the same reason. By taking another person's possessions, you bind yourself to Satan, while the man who fails to find his belongings becomes a source of low vibrations which give life energy to the powers of darkness. Even if you have stolen something which he does not need, it will still upset him. That is what you do by taking what does not belong to you. Open your soul to the dictates of the Lord, instead of being envious. Do not despair. Do not expose it to some unrighteous temptations, and you will exult in having trampled on the crudely acting Satan. That is why you need to follow the commandments of the Lord. Destroy Satan in the universe, so that people would consider them to be a denial of their eternal desires. Without understanding the true meaning of sin, there is no need to follow the commandments. For internal resistance to the commandments produces in a man the same low vibrations which give life to the powers of darkness. That is why you shall change your attitude to the prohibition of certain acts and feelings. These prohibitions are for the eternal life of the soul in the eternal universe, and sins do not allow this to happen. It is easy to say, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not commit adultery, but that is not enough. People cannot understand why they should not do what attracts them. Sin is a human desire which man feels at the instigation of Satan. That is what sin is. Satan does everything in order not to disappear, and a man cannot resist such strong desires, which are strong exactly because the music of evil has seized the earth, and there is no gap for the rays of light in pitch darkness. Here is a parable about it. A money changer's little son asked him, How can you deceive people by giving them less money than they need? The money changer replied, Otherwise, there would be no need for me to change money. I live by making a profit from this craft. The son was surprised. But can theft be called a life? Stealing is a sin, and a life based on sin is death rather than life. The moral of the parable is that you have to answer in heaven for the sinful fundamentals of your life. But do you not know that sin cannot be the fundamental of life? The fact that you are trying to ignore it brings sad thoughts to the Lord. Purity of deeds, thoughts, and feelings seem incomprehensible to you in a world that you have arranged for yourselves on earth. And to make purity possible, it is necessary to change this world. But what should you start with? You should start 
with the purity of the soul, so you will understand that the heavenly lies at the heart of the earthly, and by thinking differently, you have come to the edge of the abyss. Even if the mind tells you, I do not consider it to be a sin, because it is true according to earthly concepts, then listen to your soul. If something in you resists such an act, listen to your inner voice. The soul knows that it must pass into eternity unblemished, and if all of a sudden it says to you, perish, but do not compromise your conscience, listen to it instead of the mind which is afraid of destroying its bodily home where it dwells. A believer knows that behind the material existence there is an invisible world where his soul will continue its existence. So a believer has nothing to worry about except for eternity, and for the right to deserve it he strives with his whole existence. Sin is an obstacle on this way. Here is a parable about it. People put a wreath on the head of a horse, and a man sighed enviously. I don't quite understand for what merits the horse was crowned with flowers. The horse answered the jealous man, If you did not know envy and were bright, then you would have deserved such a wreath from the Lord compared to which the one that people put on me as a joke would be like the light of a candle against the light of the sun. The moral of the parable is that envy is such a murderous feature of the human soul that it extinguishes the divine and ignites the satanic in it. Being envious of others, you do so much damage to yourself, which is difficult even to describe, because envy is stupidity, failure to understand that everyone has one's own hardships in life, and that the suffering of other people is not less than yours. And it is also the anger which dampens the heavenly light in you with its low vibrations. Envious people are the worst kind in the world, for they are stupid and malicious at one and the same time. Clean your souls from the murky veil of sin. May praying be of help in that.